Hey everybody, happy Wellness Wednesday. HBK Wellness Wednesday, back with another topic and question for you guys. I was speaking to a very, very, very dear friend of mine who happens to basically be a mermaid out of water. And she was telling me the other day, she'd just gotten back from the doctor and they were a bit concerned about her liver and wanted to run some additional tests. They talked about some supplements and things of that nature. So I said I would use that as my topic for Wellness Wednesday this week because it was much easier to talk about all these things rather than sit there and try and type it all to her in an email or a message. But look below for some links and other information as we go through this. So as I was looking up some of the information on this, because of course, immediately off the top of my head, I thought of one supplement, but I knew there were more and I knew that I had worked with more besides the liver and gallbladder detox that I actually talked about a while ago on oh, another Wellness Wednesday because I had just done it at the instruction of my nutritionist. So I was talking to her and I said I would do this. First and foremost, the biggest thing I saw as I read through a lot of the information about the supplements that were recommended, depending on where you looked, was one of the big, 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 big keys that we have to help our liver help itself with is inflammation. Huge amount of the problems that we end up going through with our livers is if we have inflammation. The liver is inflamed, it just can't do its job well, and it's highly affected by a lot of things that do that. So antioxidants in particular kept coming up over and over and over again in various forms to help reduce that inflammation in the liver. Obviously we're aware of certain diseases like various forms of hepatitis, which really are just a lot of inflammation. The other major thing that we worry about is what's known as fatty liver. Frequently that's caused because of lifestyle choices. However, for some of us where we suffer and struggle with inflammation as a general rule, that's a lot of times where that can come from as well. Now, of course, my friend is very, very young, only in her mid-20s, and has a very clean lifestyle. She has smoothies every day for breakfast and goes for a walk just about every morning doesn't indulge in alcohol, no drugs, cigarettes, and things of that nature at all. And right now we're not dancing, so there's not a lot of risk in that behavior either, which is usually leads to a lack of sleep. So that's why it really is a mystery is what's going on. However, I know that a lot of our weird things, especially when it's linked to inflammation, can start in our 20s, which is what happened to me as well. So let's look at a couple of these supplements. First and foremost, like I mentioned, was milk thistle, of course. This is the powerhouse all over the world in clinical studies, even in hospitals and other places like that. Milk thistle is the thing that is really used the most often. And of course, it was the first one I thought of. It's also one that my boyfriend was on for a while at the recommendation of our doctor because his liver numbers came back weird. It is a powerhouse. And one of the main reasons is one of its main ingredients is silmirulin. And I'm probably saying that wrong, but that's how I'm going to say it for now. And that is a huge antioxidant for the liver and really helps to balance all that out. Another thing that was interesting in some of the research that I saw was that this compound is a precursor to glutathione. It the body uses it to create glutathione. Now you guys have heard me talk about glutathione quite a bit on my various streams because it is so good for our immunity. However, it is a royal pain in the backside. My supplement of glutathione just came in the mail today, wrapped up in the little silver thing with the cold pack next to it. It has to be overnight shipped because it has to be kept cold. It is such a high maintenance supplement. Oh, it might as well be a blonde. Anyway, so anything we can do to help the body help itself produce glutathione rather than having to supplement with it is certainly a benefit. And milk thistle is one of those major powerhouses that is going to help 
antioxidant creation and help protect your liver. The next one on the list totally made so much sense when I really understood this glutathione connection and that was NAC or N-acetylcysteine. You guys have heard me talk about that again primarily for immunity because it is one of those major building blocks to glutathione. So again, we can really benefit our livers in helping the body help itself by supplementing with these type of supplements for that. I happen to use both because I do suffer from a lot of inflammation, unfortunately. And it also has been shown in hospital settings, the use of NAC has been used for acetaminophen poisoning. And that was another thing that came up several times as I was looking through some of this stuff. And that was acetaminophen is really, really, really hard on your liver. Now, some people have to use acetaminophen, my boyfriend is one of them, if you've had gastric bypass, because it's the only anti-inflammatory over the counter that you can take that the body will break down with a shortened intestinal tract. So it really depends, but it's something to look out for. And I was really surprised to see that that was used in hospital settings. The next thing was so funny because for me, it was like, a, oh my gosh, that's right. Because it's been so many years, probably 15 since I used artichoke leaves or artichoke hearts, depending on the supplement you're looking at, for helping in detox the liver. This again actually has that same component in it as milk thistle, that silurimian, or however you say it. Sorry, I'm really, I'll spell it out for you up above so you can look it up. But it has the same supplement in it. It's got that same compound in it, which is why it's not in as high a dose, which explains why milk thistle is usually used and researched over artichoke. But again, we can eat this. I actually love artichoke hearts. So that was kind of a fun one for me. Like, oh, I like to eat those almost every day. So again, really good for the liver. And remember, our diet can really help the body help itself as well. So we don't need to supplement if we eat a little differently. The next one on the list was another one that my nutritionist put me on, primarily for helping the kidneys. But again, it's another detoxing herb, and that is dandelion root. This one is really good at not only removing toxins and helping support the lymph, but it boosts bile production. That's one of the other main jobs of the liver besides detoxing is bile production. This is where fat and the liver really come into play because bile is one of those major components in the digestion of our fat that the GI tract uses. So again, I kind of rolled my eyes and went, well, I drink dandelion root tea. Not all the time. I did kind of overdo it on dandelion root tea. So that is one of those things that you really kind of have to look at, ease into it if you're going to do it go off it or one of the things that worked well for me was alternating between dandelion root and peppermint to help support the system. Yellow dock was the next one on the list and that has been forever and a day used as a tonic in a lot of natural remedies. The biggest thing that again I remembered grandma giving me who daughter of an osteopath, Essiac tea. This is one of the main ingredients in Essiac tea, and it is a major blood detoxifier and purifier. So that's another one we can look for as well. Staying kind of in the root category, beetroot was the next one. And this one was really interesting because this one, again, married with our digestion. Biggest thing with beetroot is it has pectin in it, which is also found in high doses in apples. So here we go again with what we eat makes a difference. That high fiber content helps sweep toxins out of the gut, which allows the liver to work a little bit less at detoxing the rest of the body because things will move out of the gut instead of being reabsorbed into the bloodstream. So think about how the body works and it starts to really make sense. Ginger, one of my other favorites, and my girl and I are actually talking about making some, she makes a homemade chocolate. I make some crystallized ginger candy and we're talking about marrying those together for Christmas gifts for people. So that might help her as well. Ginger is a major detoxifier and again, anti-inflammatory. Here we go again with inflammation in the liver. Wraps right back around. It's amazing how things kind of come back around and come back around. So ginger is just so fantastic for that. 
the ginger roll in it and the other compound are really good at reducing the body's production of other inflammatory compounds and that'll be in the link in the article that I put below for you guys to read about. Choline was the next one and this one really links to that fat component. Now, like I talked about, the bile production helps the body digest fats, but we don't want those fats in the liver. That's where they cause issues. We want them out at the other organs that need them. And choline is a great supplement for helping do that because it helps fat get transported in other places because it helps bind to it and move it where it needs to be. So that can be a really good one. It also can be a great supplement if you're low on energy and struggling with some of the other things that come around if the liver is too toxic. It can really be beneficial for those types of things. Molybdenum is another one. And this is a catalyst for many of the enzymes that, and peptides that help the body, again, with that anti-inflammatory response. And reducing inflammation is so beneficial for that liver. And last on the list was selenium. This is another one that helps the body make glutathione. I should have just put it at the top with those other ones, right? But that wasn't the way the article was written because it doesn't have a strong an effect on it but major, major, major difference. And of course, all our minerals are always super important. But remember, biggest thing for the liver is let's reduce, reduce, reduce that inflammation, get those antioxidants up, keep the fat out of it. Think about the fats that you're eating. That was one of the other first things I talked to her about was dairy sometimes can really contribute to a fatty liver because the body does struggle to break it down and it is a kind of high in fat content. So we want to think about that may be something that we want to minimize in our diet. But again, she only has it a couple times a week, so that's not it. All right, you guys. As always, I'm looking for topics. I know last week's video on posing for pictures was super, super, super popular. Thank you guys for sharing that. Share this one as well. Going into the holiday season, we want to make sure we're going to be having more alcohol. We're going to be having more sugar, which is going to drive up that inflammation. We really do want to support our liver to help keep off those holiday pounds. What else do you guys want to talk about? Comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't to the page. In the meantime, I'm Keonalia. I want to see you guys move, live, and thrive. So I'll see you on the next one.